Chapter 2 starts out with inductive reasoning and conjectures. And Chapter 2 is um, based around um, reasoning and proof. So we're going to start with inductive reasoning. And inductive reasoning is reasoning that uses a number of specific examples to arrive at a prediction. Conclusions arrived by inductive reasoning lack logical certainty. So um, you might use logic or inductive reasoning every day when you leave your house before school and you say, every day since today, I've left my house at seven o'clock and I'm always on time for school. So we assume that every day we can leave at seven o'clock to be on time for school. So um, what if there's a wreck? What if there is, um, if your car breaks down? What if something goes wrong? Um, we're using a prediction or we're assuming things, but it might not always happen. So that's inductive reasoning. Um, a conjecture is something that you've probably heard before. Um, it's just an educated guess. We use that a lot in science. So it's an educated guess based on known information. And a counter example, counter means opposite kind of, and we're just given an example. So an example used to show that a given statement is not always true. So that doesn't mean it's false. That just means that it might not always be true. All right, let's get into some of our inductive reasoning. And one big thing inductive reasoning is that you've done before are patterns. So write a conjecture or a statement that describes the pattern, and I spelled pattern wrong, 2, 4, 12, 48, and 240. Then use the conjecture to find the next item in the sequence. So the first step is always to look for that pattern. So it might not come to you right away. And you might have to try again and again. So I know from 2 to 4, if I add 2, that equals 4. Okay, so let's try it again. So does plus 2 work? No, that doesn't work. So we need to try again. What about times 2? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is not equal to 12. All right, let's, let's think about this. What if I did 2 times 2? Okay, 4 times, oh, 3 is 12. Okay. Is 3 times 4, 48. Okay, that checks out. What about 48 times, keeping with my pattern, 5? That does equal 240. So my next item would be times 6. All right, so the conjecture is a statement. So after you have found your pattern, Step two is you're going to make a statement about your pattern. So the number is multiplied by two, three, four, so on and so forth. So the next item will be multiplied by six. So the next item in the sequence is 240 times six, which will be 1440, 1,440. And some people are better at identifying patterns than others, so you're just going to have to trial and error. Another type of example to look for patterns is with figures. So use the, your conjecture to find the next item in the sequence. So first step, look for a pattern. Always look for a pattern first. We have to do that before we can make a conjecture. So three sides and then my next item is nine sides the next is 18 okay um i don't really see if i times it by three nine times three is not 18 so that won't work um i'm not really seeing anything so i'm gonna actually draw the next item because that may help me a little bit more than just trying to figure it out without a picture. So 18 sides was before. I'm going to add 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I would say my next item would be 30 sides. All right, so what do I do here? So I'm adding 6 here. I add 9 and 12, or 9, 9, sorry, not looking at my notes. 
9 and 9. 18 to 30 is, yes, that is plus 12. So how do I get there? 3, 9, 12. Maybe I'm adding 3. I add 3 there. I add 3 there. Okay, so maybe my conjecture or my statement can be I'm multiplying or I'm adding the next item will add three more to from the previous. Addition. <coughs> and there's no right way, I would say, to make your conjecture. Just kind of describe what pattern you're seeing. So the next item would be 18 plus 12, which would give you my next item in the sequence to be 30. All right, I'm going to have you stop this video right there, and I would like you to try the next two checkpoints, finding those patterns. Here are your answers. You can check. All right, we are going to move into algebraic and geometric conjectures. Algebraic and geometric will look a little bit different than um, one another, so let's see how they might look. So, um, make a conjecture, or make an educated guess about the sum, which is addition, of an odd and an even number. List some examples that support your conjecture. So let's list some examples. 1 plus 2, okay, that equals 3. And um, 3 plus 4 equals 7. If you were asked to list some examples, at least, at least list 3 to 4 examples, if not more. Um, we'll do 4 plus 5 equals 9, okay. So now we're going to look for our pattern in our sum. Okay, 3, 7, and 9. All right, and then I need to make a conjecture or a statement about my pattern. So I might say an odd plus an even number will be... Oh, 3, 7, and 9 are all off. And there's your conjecture. All right, what about geometric? So I have four points, or three points, L, M, and N, and I'm not really sure where they go. I'm also given the information L, M is 20, M, N is 6, and L, N is 4. But I need to make a conjecture about just that information. We might want to draw a figure with th some things we might think. So some ways to go about it. I know that 14 and 6, if I added those together, I would equal 20. And I have three points, so maybe because two of them add together to equal 20, maybe my entire length is LM because that's the biggest length, which is 20. Maybe I could say that um, N would be my other, so I would say that this would be 14, and this would be 6, and I put my point wrong, because the, how about right there? All right, so I've drawn an illustration, so let's examine my figure, since L, M, Ln plus Mn does equal 20. The points can be collinear with N between them. And I'm, again, this doesn't mean that that is the truest statement and there's nothing else, but that's what I'm getting from the information. So when I make my conjecture, A conjecture or an educated guess could say that L, M, and N are, they're probably collinear. If they add together to equal 20 or the whole length, they could be collinear. And somebody might prove me wrong with a counterexample, but that's kind of what I got from it. Again, G 
Geometric conjectures may look very different than algebra. All right, here are your next two checkpoints. See if you get the same answers. And last two things, make a conjecture from the data. So um, the table shows the total sales for the first three months the store is open. The owner wants to predict or make an educated guess or use inductive reasoning for the sales for the fourth month. We're going to make a statistical graph using a scatter plot. So we're going to label our horizontal and vertical lines. And I put that um, my vertical line is in the thousands. So my first month is going to be $500. So first month, $500. Second month, $1,500. Third month, $4,500. Well, I can look at my graph and say, okay, for the fourth month, I'm going to predict that we're probably going to be up here somewhere. But maybe let's look at the graph. So from 500 to 15 and 15 to 4,500, what is my fourth month going to look like? Well, I do see that from 500 to 1,500, I can multiply that by 3. Let's see, if 1,500 to 4,500... That does multiply by 3 to 2. So maybe my conjecture says the sales triple each month. Or you could say multiply by 3. So the fourth month would be 4,500 times 3, which would give me 35 or 1,350 in sales, which would be way up here somewhere. So our prediction was pretty good, and we used that graph to help us predict where it might be. And last, based on the table shown, unemployment rates for various countries in Texas, find a counterexample for the statement. The unemployment rate is the highest in cities with the most people. So remember, counterexample is just one that says that statement is not always true. Sometimes it is, but it isn't. So, we need to find one so that it's not always true. So let's look at this. Not always true. All right. All right, so I'm looking for the most people. Most people. Most people. Okay. Um, so if I look at the graph, it says that the bigger the population, the more the unemployment rate raises. Well, those are the two largest cities, but if you look down here, doesn't Maverick have more unemployment rate than El Paso and Cameron? So, because I found that, Maverick has 50,436 people and has a higher unemployment rate than El Paso that has way more people. So because I found one city that doesn't fit that statement, this statement is not always true. So my counterexample would be Maverick. Remember, you only have to find one for it to be not always true. It can be true sometimes, but not always. So. Um, I hope this helped, and um, if you need any more examples for counterexamples, inductive reasoning, the internet is a great place to look. Thanks.